Titans. 1 to 0 versus Mikael. It is the youngest player in the tournament against the oldest player in the tournament. They're both playing undead. And who's gonna come out on top? The favorite, certainly 1 to 0. The golden boy. The first four editions, he was in every single final. Since then, dropped a bit. Wasn't able to repeat that. You see, on the way to his fifth grand final. Mikael on the other side. Third gold league only uh, out of 11 editions. First time playoffs for him. If Mikael, the old Korean undead legend, the ESWC winner of 14 years ago, that would be a huge upset. I like the name Golden Boy. It fits 1 2 0 so well, have, has been doing so well in the Gold League for many, many years. And not just that, he's also that one guy who was able to join Olympus. All the other legends, all the other gods of the game, Moon, Infi, even Happy, Lin, they've been around for a really, really, really long time and they are the ones winning tournaments. But who else was able to do it was. 1 to 0. Starting to do it in 2015. So much talent, so much skill. The young player took the scene by storm and has claimed the title of the best Asian undead player for years. And it is not really disputed. Hasn't been for a long time. Now Mikael making his glorious comeback in terms of performance. He has been looking so good in this year. He has been kind of, uh, he has kind of turned his life around. He is practicing hard again. He's working hard again and is look, looking the best he has in years. Absolutely. He is nonetheless... Uh... Wait, that is 1-0. to zero. 1 to zero is the DreamHack Fall champion. He seems to take everything a little more serious than before. But yeah, Mikhail, when did we ever see him this strong? I can't even I can't even remember the last time he was a serious contender for tournaments. But at WCG, he already showed he's a force to be reckoned with, making a top eight run there, and he's able to repeat that. The past two times he was he was at a gold league, he lost in the first round. Not this time, no, absolutely not. Stepping his game up tremendously, like unlike any other rise, really. His group stage was a 2-0 win over Sock. That raised some eyebrows already. Was then defeated by Fly, but that is, as we just saw, no shame at all. He faced Shao Kai in an interesting match where he uh, defeated Shao Kai, who played Orc twice against Orc. Mikhail won. In the Undead Mirror, though, that was the second map, he lost. Is that foreshadowing of what's going to happen here? I hope not. I hope Mikael is going to be able to put up a good fight here. But if he wants to, he's going to have to play very well. 1-0, to zero, not really a player who has off days. Sometimes he's not bringing his 100% best game, but usually he can always rely on a strong performance by the Undead. 1-0. to zero. Also, a big question here for this Undead Mirror will be, what kind of strategies are we going to be seeing? Is it going to be mirrored styles? Is it going to be one player trying to counter the other? Who's going to be more reactive? Who's going to play more what he's practiced with and what he's been uh, training for before this tournament? Speaking of training, Mikael plays a lot on the European ladder, War 3 champions, with a worse ping there, but apparently he still enjoys it quite a bit. And what we've been seeing from him, especially in this tournament and in practice before, is lots and lots of Crypt Lord. Is that what 1-0 is planning as well? Or does he have something else prepared? Well, maybe the map picks and bans will tell us. 1-0 bans Aquiles. Mikhail bans Terrana Stand. Hmm. Picks for the Korean are Amazonian Last Refuge. For the Chinese, it's Concealed and Turtle Rock, giving us the starter map in Northern Isles. Echo and Terranus, these are the two best Crypt Lord maps by far. Which sort of surprised me to uh, see removed. I thought at least one of these guys was going to want to go for Crypt Lord here all the way through. And if I had to put my money on it, I would have said that would be Mikael. But the two best Crypt Lord maps removed. Very, very interesting. That is not to say that on the other maps, the Crypt Lord doesn't work. It's normally only AZ where the Crypt Lord really cannot be played reliably. 
and maybe Twisted Meadows, but Twisted Meadows is out of the pool. So this could still be lots of Crypt Lords in this series. Indeed. We have had a couple of encounters between them recently. There was the WCG quarterfinal and that was a qualifier in October for this very WGL. 1-2-0 played a lot of DK with a Naga second. That's interesting. He also played a Lich first opening on Amazonia. Uh, no, that was uh, Mikael, sorry. He, uh, he also played a little bit of Crypt Lord, so it is a gamble. What's going to happen? We're not too sure. I would tend to think Mikael rather the Crypt Lord player. 1 2 0, rather the DK player. But it's a gamble, really. Like, you have to, you have to roll the dice, you have to have a good pr uh, prediction, scout your opponent. Very map specific, creep route, very crucial. And uh, one, two, zero, I think he's a master of that. Early game creep route and build, and especially the mid game uh, tempo plays and m min maxing of creep route. This is what one, two, zero showed so impressively the last few times he played against Happy. If I remember right, he won the last two encounters between them and he knows exactly what to do in Undead Mirror. All right then, in the past two gold leagues, the man on the left-hand side in the red was eliminated in the quarterfinals. Oftentimes by Moon is it time to get revenge against a Korean. It is the DreamHack Fall Champion 1-2-0. And his opponent... Oh, that is a Alta Crypt build here on Northern Isles. And we're waiting. Here we go. Let's go champ was his chant at the end of the winning interview. The runner-up of Group A, formerly known as Lucifer, is Mikael. And we have Beetle Mania here for the beginning of this Best of Five series. Ghoul build with the Crypt Lord on both sides. On this map, not too surprising. You can start off with an easy green camp, getting that for free right away for additional corpses, for lots of skeletons and beetles, and the expansion is also easy to take. It's not as easy on, as Equiles. You can't creep as crazy fast as on Terranus, but it is uh, certainly one of the better maps for the Cryptoid Fast expansion, and we're gonna see who pulls it off better. Indeed. In our predictions here on Twitch and on Instagram, it's uh, 1 to 0 being the heavy, heavy favorite with around 80%. But in Crypt Lord Mirror, literally everything can happen. Who has the better early game? Who gets maybe a lightning shield? Who's going for an expansion? Who's going for a dedicated push? How do you deal with all these ghouls? So many questions. So far, everything the same. But now, builds are changing a little. Mikael going for the expansion right away. And 1 to 0 stopping at the green. All right, so a little bit of extra experience here for 1 to 0. Getting closer to 3 faster. Where Mikael wants to set up the expansion a little bit quicker. Especially the timing of that first narrow tower can make a big difference. And we see the Ziggurat placed right away to be turned into a narrow tower soon. Mikael doesn't actually have the lumber to set up the expansion right away, but that tower, as I said, the timing. Very crucial indeed. And uh, items here also can make quite a difference. Crystal Ball helps him to see what's going on, but I mean, at the moment, there's nothing great to reveal just yet, so not the item he was really hoping for. Pendant of Energy, Claws of Attack, and especially Ring of Region. That's usually what you would love to see. What is it? It's only armor right now. Plus seven armor. Well, I guess he's tanking. Oh, okay. Another undead lot of the rings here. One to zero has always struggled in his series so far. He's two and one against Fortitude. He was two and one against Focus, going the long distance, but the winner of Group B. Not losing a series, unlike Mikhail, who fell to fly before. The first battle of China and Korea, and as we said before, easy cancel here, by the way. Korea has to make up for the group stage, as we have five Chinese, three Koreans in. But this timing turns out to be really good. But on the other side, the Beatles of 1-2-0 are able to do the same, with the difference that the Ziggurat is still up. And 1-2-0 finds himself in a surround here. Mikael with the early pressure. Gonna force the TP. Wait, what? Oh boy. 
Boy. I think, I think there was a disconnect. One to and zero the admins was definitely complaining. <laughs> Both tried to pause and they resumed. Uh, we've been having a few of these connection issues, unfortunately. Always the left hand stage side, right? Something, something's up there for sure. Ooh, tough spot now. That feels so bad. You kill the expansion, you kill the tower, you get the surround, and then it turns out. Pause and pr maybe regame. Yeah, should be a regame if we can't resume from that point. One to zero also got the expansion cancel across the map. The narrow tower is still standing there, yeah. but the expo is cancelled. He would be able to reposition and keep on fighting. One ghoul went down there, maybe even two for Mikael. So this was still a very, very even game. These I guys. Think I like the build from Mikael more, though. The instant expansion? Yeah, especially, uh, you know, with that narrow not being able to get cancelled, that ziggurat seems like it's always going to be a great anchor there. Mikael did a good job sending the ghouls over from the main right away to pressure the beetles that should be taken out over time. But I'm sure 1 to 0 had a good reason for his own build and had a strong follow up there, realizing that his expansion could very well get cancelled, but ready to get the cancel on the other side. Both come in prepared and by now very experienced with the Crypt Lord. At the last WGL, when X Lord was bringing it to Nettie's, seemingly. Most Nidal, uh, most Nidal, most Undeads in Asia weren't uh, that experienced with the Crypt Lord yet, hadn't played it that much. It was so weird when Europe was celebrating Crypt Lord and everyone was yeah. playing it on Asia for a few weeks. The consensus was, uh, you know what, this Crypt Lord actually isn't that good. We're going <laughs> to stick with DK. Don't think he really can do much when everyone in Europe was uh, baffled, wondering how the hell that could be. And it took a little while for for Asia to follow in the footsteps of Europe, which is normally never the way it happens. Usually it's always the other way around, ah. but there for once. The Europeans were, and Americans were always a little more creative, I would think, and the Asians were always better in perfecting builds and especially in execution. Now, everything has kind of turned on its head, but the it really felt like, especially China, was behind in meta. By a couple of weeks, actually. Still great execution, but also there we got Hitman in America with almost perfect execution. We got, of course, Happy with the best micro probably ever. So things aren't as they once were. Yeah, but over the last few years, especially if you look towards the Line Elves, it's always Lawlight and Moon innovating. And usually the world looks towards Fly and Lin of the Orcs. And Infi and TH when they're on, to on top as well. Seems like kind of they're pushing the meta forward. But it was uh, Krav and X-Lord and Wan maybe showing the world how to play the Crypt Lord first. Now that 1 to 0 and Mikael have picked it up as well, they are really strong with that also. Especially 1 to 0's Crypt Lord against Orc looks so good. 1 to 0 seems to be the only guy who actually is able to not crumble under a fly. We saw that before when they met in the Dreamhack. Could be a match for the grand final, who knows, but there's so many awesome constellations that could happen for that. Speaking of fly and 1-2-0, they were two of the strongest looking players in the group stage. Very, very true. And definitely contenders for the title if it goes this way. What to zero and Mikael find themselves in a bracket with Moon and WFZ. So one to zero, seemingly unable to dodge Moon until Grand Finals. They always meet a little earlier. In the second half of this year, we only had one Crypt Lord mirror between them that went to one to zero. But of course, doesn't say that much. Really cool to see that one to zero got his. Got his game together again. Not many troll actions anymore. Um, not experimenting too much, especially in the high stakes tournaments. He shows up in pretty much perfect shape. Yeah, it was a little disappointing sometimes when you know he used to play the Fire Lord or the Naga second. Sometimes he used to sell Penance of Energy, which also was kind of weird. Uh, not every tournament he cares about a lot, but. Maybe maturity is catching up with 1-2-0 and of course these tournaments he very dearly cares about. 
this is the world championship this is all the prestige and it's been a long time since we've seen one to zero get really far well dreamhack fall in the gold series in the gold series that is absolutely correct yeah, two times quarterfinal in summer of 2019. That was a semifinal run. That was, of course, pretty good. Yeah, but then against uh, Moon, I think he lost there. But it was always was a good a bet. <laughs> yeah, <coughs> he lost to TH and Moon before. But uh, what I mean, I guess I should have clarified. With really far, I mean grand final. And there yeah. he hasn't been in a while in the goal league. He was overshadowed recently by Happy, who won this uh the gold series uh, what was it now three seasons ago yeah. and uh, made it to the finals twice back to back where happy was uh, looking so impressive in this tournament didn't participate by the way unwilling to play on bad ping here in the online format but has stated that once the goal lead returns to offline setting he will once again be willing to participate he will think about almost... it i think is the better way to put it because, oh, we go into a break, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, so we're going to be right back with the match. The break is over and we are back in the series in our quarterfinal first map of the best of five for the semis. We got uh, a resume. Okay. We got one to zero with a level three DK. No TP anymore, but a big mana potion. Had to go into a ritual dagger as well. Mikael still holding on to the TP, still with the crystal ball. And he's moving across the map now. Has to catch up in levels quite a bit. But 1 to 0 is abandoning his expansion plans. And Mikael still with the second base. Only just started production though. Could be getting cancelled quite easily. I believe that's four level 2 beetles waddling over right there. Yep, it certainly is. And that expo is only halfway done. That looks like a cancel. Yeah, Mikael not even going over there. If he invests Impale, maybe he can save it. But you know what? Probably not. The Beetle cancellations over and over. Now it's one to zero. It's like a, it's like a game of whack-a-mole over here with these expansions. Exactly. The pendulum, the expansion pendulum swings back and forth and back and forth. And this is quite a big ghoul army for the Chinese. One of mana stealing for Mikael. We do have a staff for the Korean as well. And now, if 1-0 gets this tower, Mikael is supply blocked. And this expansion seems to certainly be cancelled for quite a while. More and more beetles getting summoned. 1-0 is putting attention on the northern side of the map of Northern Isles while he is expanding. Mikael now sending the beetles down there as well. No tech on either side yet, I believe. Mikael sees the expansion. He might be able to get that cancel himself with the Beatles. Okay, but his main base is under attack, and that might cost him. The ghouls are very, very hurt. Splits it away from the rest of the army and deals with the Beatles relatively quickly. And the Beatles acolytes... Nowadays, collision size increased, so they can't scurry between the buildings anymore. That's why they were stuck there, and that's more experience going the way of Mikael. He is taking them all out. Also, they don't have Burrow by default anymore. You have to research it nowadays. Makes them a lot less frustrating to play against. Still only on tier 1, still only ghouls. But this expansion now looking pretty secured by 1-2-0. This attempt now might be coming through. Okay, we'll see about that. Mikael is expanding at the same time, so... He should be able to defend this... Maybe the problem really is that he can't produce anything at the moment. And 1-0 has 250 gold. Is he checking behind this as well? That would be really greedy. The ghoul gang is moving forward. Also, so much mana. This beetle is taken care of, but there's no fortification at all. Little pit stop here in the middle. This will be a big item from the warlord and should be level 4 as well. Mana Stone, Heal Award, Health Stone, Book of the Dead. Lots of good items here. Oh, one ghoul going down, but, uh, well, there's plenty to replace that one, I suppose. Wand of the Wind. Ooh. I don't think that's very good, honestly. You cyclone him up, but okay, it's only six seconds. Only six seconds. That's a long time. 
Yeah, if you can prevent the coil or a crucial stomp in a big fight, yeah. But if it comes to a fight with mass ghouls versus mass ghouls, it's gonna last quite a while. Three towers. Heavy, heavy, heavy fortification for 120. And I think with that, he was never really able to tag. Mikael also building three ziggurats at the expansion, creeping the middle. Oh, looking for that surround, and he gets it! Uh oh, there's no staff, there's no TP. Impale to fight through this, but the healed scroll! What the value for Mikael here! Is it enough? That is six seconds now, but this is also a hero kill for the Korean. He's dashing out all the impales he got, so now the ghouls are on their own and Mikael's still having mana. Crypt Lord, revive. He has a big potion. Oh, he used it before! Everything's low Not now. Not much mana left, but he had to go for the revive right there. Can't. Get it surrounded again, but that doesn't seem to be happening. That was expensive, the level 4 hero. That was like 540 gold or something like that. Yeah. 1 2 0 now pretty broke. Might have but... prevented the tech once again. Ooh, okay, there's a staff for Mikael, so even if he gets surrounded. Belt of Giant Strength for Crypt Lord, not too bad. It's the nice thing about crypt playing Crypt Lord. Those belts mm -hmm. and rings are actually pretty useful. Both on the As way. As the tech starts exactly. for both. Army of... Uh, army Haunted Goldmine of 120. Not fully saturated, I think. There was an Acolyte missing. Towers deal with the Beatles now. Seems like there's a perfect moment here for 120 to go for that Ritual Dagger. There it is. Lots of ghouls. Wow. The, ex the experience swing is pretty crazy after that camp in the middle. 4.6 for Mikael, who can now cancel that second crit really easily. There's no spirit tower in the main, so not so easy to deal with these beetles. All right, off we go. The, the mad beetle. frenzy. The beetle battle once again. Lots of ghouls for 1 to 0 here. Mikael shouldn't really stand a chance, but m maybe with a little bit of mana. Oh, he's positioning himself for an impale. <laughs> <laughs> Not willing to use the mana, though. That would be his last. Nothing dying just yet. So, how quickly are they going to go into fiends? We see them now starting for 1 to 0. Over in Europe, sometimes when we see Crypto vs. Crypto expansion, we, upon occasion, go as high as 50 supply pure ghouls, which is uh, pretty crazy. Here we see the fiends coming out a little bit sooner. Should be a DK joining soon with statues, and then this uh, game might stabilize on two base two base. And then, triple hero, 80 supply, tier 3, gimme! Another ghoul kill for Mikael, crawling slowly towards that level 3, Impale gets another kill, right? Yeah, only the creep, but also lots of damage on these ghouls. Fiend transition already in the works. Yeah, this is pretty mirrored here now. We saw a bit of a different opening build, different cancellation timings on the expansions, but still cancels on both sides, so... It is very even so far. Oh, that's a couple of kills here now, though, going to 1 to 0. Oh, there was three ghouls. Yeah. There's a lot of experience. He's almost level 5 now. Really good usage of the Impale. But there's Heal Scroll and Invo Potion for Mikael, who's rotating out of ghouls into more and more fiends. We see the same for 1 to 0. DK for the Chinese, definitely a little faster. With that, can he claim map control as our stream is taking a little break, but everything is fine uh, again now? <sighs> 1 to 0. I feel like he needs items, man. Another fight. He has no heal scroll, no invo, no staff. But he's getting level 5, or is he? No mana to use on both sides. Yeah, didn't buy the mana pots, which is really weird. Normally, we always see that nowadays. Yeah, there we go. Oh, okay, the DK's bringing it. Could have gotten it with the crypto just a second ago, but off we go. We have a Zeppelin, which is pretty cool. At the moment, that's a good way of saving units. Of course, Zoo soon will, web will be coming, but it's still stuck behind Burrow. As both are a little bit greedy here, trying to min-max the resources, staying in no upkeep. 
But that level 5 Crypt Lord is just around the corner. For both players, who's gonna get it first? DKs have arrived as you said already. That's level 5 for 1 to 0. Mikael wants to catch up. That's the fee. Uh, that's the ghoul down. That's probably the second ghoul down. The coil arm always in the air, but always too late. One to zero, patient with the impale. Still holding on to the mana. He's got another mana potion. Zeppelin taken out as well. What's the target? One to zero wants to go for. He could line up for a massive impale on all the fiends. Okay, here's the Impale on the Crypt Lord, but level 5 Crypt Lord with two rings, is that the best target to go? I don't know. Always coils, that was the last one. Pretty good trade for Mikael though. He takes out the ghouls, he keeps position on the map, and maybe he can even steal now the rest of the camp away. However, mana now low. No more Impale for him, whereas 1-0 still has it. That was not the greatest Impale, but it hits the fiend that was intended. Heals oh. full force. And the coil! And the burrow! Saves that one, so the impale didn't result in a kill at all. Who's gonna get the big creep? Would be level 5 for Mikael, probably. Focus 5. Oh, the coil! But Mikael got it. Yeah, and the pen of energy, which is the best item he could have hoped for. And a lot of fiends coming out here. Level 5. A moment ago, 1 to 0 had a. 1,000 gold bank, investing now, breaking upkeep now, arrived on tier 3 with Lich and Orb and Destroyers. Even, su even supply, even levels, items in favor of Mikael. Yeah, Mikael holding his own really, really well. He has a little bit of a lead in this game. It's only a tiny one, though. Items will definitely make quite the difference. That pen of energy was the first really good one. Auras at the corners, at the red camps. Yeah, also flute maybe. Marketplace could come in very handy, both on two bases, both very rich. Maybe willing to invest for the Katka's pipe, for the ancient Django. For the flute, those are the items that you might buy at the marketplace. Shop control, of course, always important as well, as there is only one shop. Need the invuls, want the invuls. So, red spot for Mikael. What's he gonna get? Clause plus 12. It was, yeah, clause plus 12, exactly. Flute for 1 to 0. Bought, though. Expensive. Use the Frenzy Ghouls here to creep a little bit in the middle. Doesn't get the experience, but I guess gold. It's also good scouting for him in the middle of the map while the DK and Lich get the experience from the corner. Red cam drop for him. Unholy Legion Aura. Doomhorn, well. That's not gonna be too Got Banshees for Mikael. Is 1 to 0 following into the Banshee transition? Crypt Lord is home to defend. That is relatively easy with a Destroyer and Impale. And the rest of the army continues creeping. Level 3 DK. That's another lead for Mikael. Level 2.3 Lich, though, with Dark Ritual. That's going to be the damage dealer for the Chinese. Is that the first or the second temple for 1 to 0? I think it's the first, right? That seems pretty late. It's going to TP out of this. Doesn't like the look of this anymore. Another ring. Ooh. This is actually, I think, not too bad. The Three. DK and the Crypt Lord will be the front liners and taking off damage at all times. It's going to help a lot against the Orb of Corruption. I like the rings as well since the buff, but three might be a little overkill if you could have, like, especially the plus four. If that's a claw, it's definitely better. Mikael losing a five supply destroyer. That was expensive. Third attack upgrade coming in. Lumber still looking pretty good for 1 to 0. He's getting all the right upgrades, but he doesn't have the Banshee tech yet. Mikael does. He's got a few Banshees with the army already. Anti magic. But that's an easy cancel. Plus 8 Lich. Claw for Mikael as well, catching up at level 2. And has the level 2 coil experience lead. Has the. Belt on the Lich. Interesting. And bought a lightning sh bought or found a lightning shield? Definitely got a lightning shield. 
And here we have a pretty big push now. Both at around 70 supply. One to zero wants to come in from behind with a backstab, but Ziggurat uh, is already down. Now one to zero supply stuck. Different build on the Liches, by the way. Frost Armor and Dark Ritual on either side. And this is looking pretty okay for Mikael so far, despite this being a backstab. Dashing through his mana once again. Impales all over the place. DK is the target. On the other side is the Lich. Nova. Invo Potion. Okay, who can do more damage? I don't see too much anti-magic shield, actually. Only on the first hero. Can he save the DK? It looks like it takes a feed. Big Nova! But couldn't get more kills. Curse everywhere. Third base in the works. Might be getting cancelled once again. With... Is he heading over there? This is a very ballsy expansion. Maybe not something that's going to be expected. And in fact, not going to be scouted. But it is crept already. So the time that 1 to 0 is spending there, he's not spending at the marketplace, at the merchant, anywhere else on the map. And if it works, that's phenomenal. Yeah, speaking of marketplace, 1 to 0 certainly has the gold for it. These red camp drops, these auras can be amazing. The Django and the mana or other brilliance especially. And he's camping there, he's looking, but he doesn't like what's on the shelves currently. Well, he does like the pendant though, I think he just bought the pendant of energy. Yes, absolutely true. 400 mana now for him. 1 to 0 caught up with the DK, that is level 2 for him. <clears throat> Scout by Mikael in the upper left. Wants to prevent another expansion, uses that ghoul, he has enough lumber already. 83 oh upgrades, we're closing in on 80 supply. Next fight, 1 to 0, might have Banshees himself though. And then it's the perfect Undead army. Yeah, he's only got two Banshees at the moment. Will want a third. When the armies are that big, you want like five or six Banshees, but they don't really fit into the army at the moment. Did you see the Lich of 1 to 0? <laughs> that is a crazy one. I yeah, would love to have an Invul as well, but wasn't able quite to get to the middle of the map. Two invuls on Mikael. Pushing again. One heal scroll, one mana potion. Impale hits a lot of this fiends. Lots of downtime. One abomination in the north. Not focused at all. He's just tanking that normal damage. Impale was good. Mike Mikael dropping a little bit with his D uh, with his crypto. There's only a town portal and coils to save him. Not about the impales here, how well they land. This one was really good, preventing the counter impale and preventing the coil, finding quite a few fiend kills. Anti-magic is starting to wear off. Supply still very even. Going for the Lich, Lich now. He is absolutely gonna die. Uh -oh. No coil in time to save this one. That's the full of the Orb of Corruption done. How can he bring the damage without those two items? Level 4 for Mikael storming forward. 1 to 0. Dropping in supply despite fighting with the towers in his back. Turning around to the left hand side. Now out of the shadow of the towers. Trying to catch the reinforcements. And that's working really well. All of a sudden we have a 10 supply lead. What is there? He needs to send the ghouls into the middle and go for the tavern revive. He doesn't have time. Otherwise, the DK getting focused. What is there? About to lose this game. Death Knight last second TP. Oh my goodness. How many heroes have we seen super close to dying? Does Mikael still have the fighting power to push through this? There's still a mana potion. There's still two invul potions. 1 to 0 never had the money to revive the Lich at the tavern. DK still in trouble. Is there a Nova? No Frost Armor, mind you. Trying to get rid of these Banshees while putting pressure onto this expansion. High upkeep for Mikael, who's at three bases now. Yeah, this game is looking wonderful for the Korean right here. 1 to 0, so far behind, is trying everything. The Impales connecting, but not enough damage with the Orb and the Lich missing. Of course, hard to actually find these kills. The faster Banshee tech. The faster anti-magic being spread everywhere, making, I think, the big difference in this game. And Mikael not willing to be cheap, to bank a little more. He's just pushing further and further. About to break the second base. But 1 to 0 never gives up the fight. That's an impale. Going for the hero focus now. Coil is ready. Invo potion as well. This Impale, pretty much only hitting the DK, immediately going for the anti-magic, but burns through it. Uh-oh, he's kind of blocked by himself. It's so much stuff, he can't pass it. And the DK dies, but on the other side, Info Potion again with 2-3 HP. These hero saves today. 
crazy 26 supply lead for Mikhail. Yeah, the DKs are definitely the exposed target there always in these late game fights when the damage is so high. DK cannot heal himself unless there's Death Pact, which we don't see here. I think Undeads in this late game need to get a little bit better with keeping the DK way in the back, not using him as a frontliner, but of course very hard to do with all the chaos that is ensuing. Main bases Ma are down. Two base for Mikhail, one base for 120. Could he finally afford an invo potion? Yes. No heal scroll though. Two heal scrolls for Mikhail. Yeah, that expansion, the bottom right, brilliant move by Mikhail. Wasn't scouted. So unusual that it would be placed there. Normally 1 to 0, a king of scouting. But for once, he didn't check that one. Oh, getting caught now in a bad <sighs> position. Some of the statues there in the back. Okay. Mm, not willing to engage yet. For a little while, 1 to 0 even had the economy lead. With being a normal upkeep on two bases against high upkeep on three bases. But now that's gone as well. Level 2 Nova on both sides. Level 4.4. The lead on the DK is crazy. Impale as well! Long stun on the Crypt Lord, taking a lot of damage there right away. He gets healed up again. Crypt Lord for Mikael needs to be careful. He tried to prevent the coil with the Impale. Lots of damage again, the focus hard, but that Impale hit the entire army. Oh the spikes God. on both sides. So impactful, the level 3 spell. Going for the DK again. now, but gotta be careful. Can't coil oh. and has to go for the TP. 1 2 0. Lives another day. And now he might be able to deal with the bottom right. He is aware of that now. Mikael can respond quickly though. Oh, the Expo upper left got cancelled. But Mikael knows now that down there is his win condition. He's storming south. With a few, I think, items that he just picked up, potions he used. And if he holds this position, if he holds on to this expansion, this will be looking very good for a massive supply lead for the Korean. Yeah, no Which way, really, to fight this, especially if there's mana. Again, going for the DK, it's going to be a problem here. He has a heal sprawl. Is that enough? Needs to go into the back, far into the back, and that works. The abomination gets picked up, and every single right-click focus is a kill. Last coil, but oh my god, he can't heal against all that damage it's overwhelming it's gg it's 1-0 for the underdog mikhail looking looking composed here strong game by him weird early i think something went wrong for one two zero but we don't want to use that as an excuse in the late game it was really even it was pretty much a 50 50 game when mikhail went for that fight outside of one two zeros base and there was able to grab a bit of map control that's when he really took control of that game and the bottom right expansion was a smart sneaky little move and especially the faster banshees the banshees in the late game are usually what makes and breaks a fight whoever has more anti-magic will have the massive upper hand and i think one two zero just went for banshees way too late yeah. was the lumber missing it shouldn't really he had plenty of frenzy ghouls Maybe he just uh, rem remembered it a little bit too late. I think this might be, again, one of the instances where China is just behind in meta. In Europe, we see super early Banshees. As early as you can afford them by players like Xlord. Even Happy follows it up. Juan as well. Maybe not seeing the importance here. And maybe once again, the W3 champions practice for Mikael paying off. Yeah, it was a very clear sign there that the Banshees made a, quite the difference. So I imagine one 2 0 would be playing it differently if we go into Crypt Lord 2 base for both players again. But that is not necessarily... It will not necessarily have to be the case. It's very map dependent. one 2 0 can be very strong with DK Fiends, especially with the Naga follow-up. If we see a smaller map, a better pressure map, maybe... We're going to be seeing that coming out. One to zero even had a big mana potion. Couldn't really use it. The early game wasn't really too good. How competitive is he in Undead Mirror when it's a normal early game is the question. Will we see more 
Crypt Lord. Next question. Will one to zero go for more DKs? We don't know. We can't really predict it. No one can really predict it. Maps might give an indicator, but we can't be sure. Yeah, I would imagine on Last Refuge we will be seeing a DK. It's pretty good to harass. One to zero loves that map with DK plus Naga. DK plus Dark Ranger can also be good. Turtle Rock could also be really good for a DK Fiends harass play. Honestly, all these maps are definitely playable with the DK first. Concealed Hill, the same thing there. And what other map would be remaining? Uh, we Amazonia. Amazonia. Yeah, we have Amazonia in the pool, and that is the one map where we definitely should not be seeing a Crypt Lord. Oh. But 1 to 0 has shown it before that it's possible. Let's take a look at the maps. Concealed Hill, it is. Mm. Pretty weak map, actually, for Mikael in Mirror. Only 33% win rate there. 76 for 1 to 0. A very yeah, hard, excited. fast expansion map. Absolutely not the easiest Cryptoid map here at all. It is doable, though. I mean, you know, once you have six ghouls, four skeletons, and six beetles, you can pretty much creep anything. So <laughs> it is possible. It's just delayed, you know, it comes up a little bit later, you take some damage, you lose some units, you lose some last hits, but you can still pull it through. The 11th Warcraft Gold League, starting in 2015, when all the players were in a little uh, cardboard forest. I still remember the grand final, Infi versus 1-2-0. That was surreal, that was absolutely crazy. Then Fly versus 1-2-0, and then... Finally, the big championship in 2016 for this man right here, where he cemented... Well, this man right here, where he cemented himself amongst the top four players in the world. And finally won that Gold League, and then won it back-to-back. -back. He could be the first three-time Gold League champion, alongside Infi, who still has the chance as well. Yeah, what does there and Infi seem to be in the perfect shape at the right time. But, you know, that lead here in the series from Mikael, not necessarily what we were expecting. 1-2-0 came into this as the big favorite, but a bit of a reality check here by him. Not saying that he underestimated Mikael, but now after map 1, 1-2-0 one certainly knows that he will have to play his very best. Here we go. Map number 2. Staff of Medivh, of course. Ready to be picked up. Map number two is Concealed Hill. On the bottom left, we find the Necromancer in 1-2-0. And on the upper right-hand side, the man with the lead, it's Mikael. Didn't really cool expect build. to be able to say that, to be honest. It is the case here, and that was thanks to really solid play. Good build, good execution, he hit the timings when he needed to, never fell behind. And it's very easy to fall behind against 1-2-0, but Mikael kept it close at all moments, even grabbed a lead with the Crypt Lord 2 base play. Is that what we're going to be seeing here in Concealed? It's possible, but it's harder to pull off. However, the builds indeed are the same as before. Ghoul build for both should be a Crypt Lord for both, unless they're going crazy with the Lich. Wow. No. Crypt Lord Mirror on Concealed Hill. No DK, no possible DK Dark Ranger push, just Papa Roach. So far, Mikael looked really, really good with that. The Impale's hot, hitting a lot, always at the right time. 1 to 0 sometimes was a little late with the coils. Is it gonna be the Whack a Mole expansion game once again? Yeah, it definitely could be. Normally here, the creep art is pretty much set in stone. You go for the green camp first, you get four skeletons total, and then you move over to the natural, fairly easy to creep. After the natural creep, of course, you have the expansion coming up, you go to the merchant, and there you get level three, and you can go for a tele staff. If there's a unit ready across the map, which there always should be with beetles, 
then you can try to be aggressive with the Tele Staff. That movement can oftentimes be mirrored, in fact, so that both Crypt Lords staff over, both get the cancel, and things can get wild quite fast. Mental of Intelligence, a couple more Beatles. 4 1 2 0. Yeah, I'm looking forward to some run buys here, for sure. Gauntlets. More damage, more HP. Both can be happy with the first item, but of course the early game is not about the little turtle spot. That's just providing a couple of corpses for beetle skeletons. The real deal is this one right here. Yep. Claws, Ring of Region, and Pendant. The best drops here. Parry at the worst. So timing-wise, it's looking very, very similar. 1-2-0 this time a little faster. Oh my god, those ghouls are all so hurt. Oh, Jesus. It's working out, though, Neo. Don't worry. It's Me? Never, never. I wasn't nervous for a second. I'm, I'm trusting in the skills of 1-2-0. Looking quite a bit better here for Mikael, though. But the poison kicks in. Only parry up for 1-2-0. But faster... For him as well. Oh boy! That Crypt Lord has a lot of staying power. Yeah. Under there sells the parry up and goes for the circlet. I like that. First run by. And, yeah. But it. Right. But, oh, he doesn't see it? Mikkel should be. None of them see this? <laughs> No one's really ready. No one's scouting the left and right lanes. And so the beetles arrive and the ghouls. This could be a double cancel. Is Mikael oh. going to follow up with his own staff? Not no, really. Both cancel. A cheaper early, oh, late early game. Not willing to buy the staff. And this is a new skill required in Undead Mirror nowadays. Resource cost uh, assessment. How much can I afford to lose? How much should I invest trying to make things expensive for my opponent? When is something going to be an overextension? What's a good attack? What am I willing to sacrifice? In the past, it was just I make DK, I make fiends, and then I try to not lose fiends and I micro. Pretty straightforward. In a Crypt Lord Mirror with expansions, it becomes a lot less obvious. Okay. That's a TP gone again. 4 1 to 0 as he got caught. Beetles 2 on both sides. Mikael still without a stab. Is he able to respond somehow? Ooh, that's a big force. It's pretty much the same as on NI. Where 1 to 0 is the first to cancel. And killing the Ziggurat as well. That keeps Mikael's supply blocked, and he has to get something done with this big dedicated push now. Yeah, this is definitely a cancel. Easily enough damage. But the double narrow is going to make uh, actual fighting here quite difficult. 1 to 0 is heading over. Two ghouls still in the north. Man on the Crypt Lord here. Very telling. And 1 to 0 doesn't have much, neither does Mikael, but very good items here for 1 to 0 now. He's got lots of right click, additional mana, and even a Tele Staff this time to get out of surrounds. Speaking of surrounds, here we go. Mikael's stuck in one and will have to TP now himself. And this will also be a ritual dagger, trying to get as many ghouls as possible. Ooh, one kill. That's it. And on the other side, one ghoul fighting two ghouls, but with the help of the tower, that's another kill here. And both will probably be able to establish all oh, their expansion! So, oh, close. so close! That is an amazing move for 1 to 0. More beetles, more pressure, more damage. I think he was considering whether he should go in or not for a little bit, and he was afraid if he staffs in, he might get killed because he doesn't have a TP now anymore. But he's just summoning the beetles, and that should be enough damage to force a cancel over here. In the meantime, Ghoul's heading into the main. Uh -oh. Lots of pressure on Mikael, very stressful. All of a sudden, 1-2-0 is all over the place. Can the oldest player in the tournament follow up macro-wise? It's really tough now to make these calls. 
But okay, one to zero pulled back. Damage done, damage taken, time to lick the wounds. And again, you have to make the assessments. Where is a smart place to attack next? How much are you willing to risk? What do you have to be wary of? It's not so easy to make the perfect choice. Level four now for Mikael. That's a big level up for him. Whereas one to zero is pressuring into the main, but I think it's mainly poking. With there being no TP, this is always dangerous in case of a Crypt Lord's around. Yeah. Mikael maxed out at 40 at the moment. Banking quite a bit. Of course, has to make sure that this expansion works. Even 1 to 0 isn't mining yet. But I guess we arrived at the stage of the game where the Expos are safe and we have other objectives, items. Mikael finally a staff, also grabbing up the first heal scroll. And the timing for the actual mining beginning is once again very similar. Oh, oh. Now he's coming in to collapse. If this is a vanilla surround, this Crypt Lord is dead. It is! This Crypt Lord is dead. Okay. Can, is there some way to find out? Impale immediately and never, ever, ever enough damage. Mikael, again, with the first hero kill. This is so big. This is so big. This might be a game-winning move. Has to be a tavern revive now for one two zero, but he doesn't have that many resources. Goes yeah. for it, but he's yeah. down in supply, and there's no spirit tower up at the expansion yet. In fact, some of his ghouls are stuck in the north, going for this little run by. Five hundred fifty gold for the revive. Yep, that's expensive. That's your tech, basically. And the ghoul flood continues. Multitasking required once again, but Mikael so far has defended everything. Big experience lead now again for the Korean. Dedicated push by 120. But Mikhail has a staff. And the Crypt Lord is very hurt again. This yeah, is looking will... horrible for 120. It yep. looks like he's about to lose this second map. He's supply blocked. He's broke. His expo is gone. Or will be gone in a second. While Mikhail is holding. And that was the overextension. That was 1 to 0, risking his Crypt Lord, thinking he could get out with a Tele Staff. But an Impale ruined his dreams. And this is. This is GG! This is a 2 0. This is a clean 2 0 for this man right there! Doesn't even look too excited. Just business as usual. The first 1 to 0 map pick goes to Mikael clean as a whistle. And this is three match points for a man that has never been in a Gold League playoff before. 1 2 0. Being surprised. Mikael surprising all of us. This could be a historic moment for Mikael. It's not over yet, but showing how strong he is in the Crypt Lord Mirror. He's been practicing on Europe. He's been playing this a ton. And 1 2 0, playing a little too risky. Playing the Crypt Lord too aggressively there, staffing out way too late. He could have staffed way earlier, by the way, to safely get out, but he gets punished there. And not just the Crypt Lord loss, also the way he sacrificed a lot of ghouls before that. I think yeah. he sent like three or four ghouls into the north, into a suicide mission. He could have just used beetles to get those cancels, but he used the ghouls. I don't know, maybe his mana was low, but whatever exactly was the difference maker, what we can clearly say is that Mikael is doing this just a little bit better. Exactly. 1 2 0 in the quarterfinal curse. Last time in summer, it was Moon eliminating him. Before that, it was Happy eliminating him. <sighs> then he had a top four run, but it was also bested by Moon. Last two times he was eliminated, it was in the end a 3 to 2 for his opponents. Will this happen again? Can he start the comeback? He has to. Time for Turtle Rock. All right, that's interesting. Turtle Rock, in theory, can be really good for the Crypt Lord to cre quickly creep level two and creep the gold mine at the starting position across and uh, get the level three there fast to harass, uh, to expand, excuse me. But also, in theory, DK instant harass could work out pretty well when you steal last hits away from the Cryptoid, who might be stuck on level one forever. Is this where 120 switches styles 
and goes back to DK Fiends? Or does he still have confidence that he can win it in the late game, Crypt Lord versus Crypt Lord? I feel it's time to change something up. But on the other side, if this is an expansion, who's going to be nasty? Last three gold leagues, Michael Mikael wasn't even qualified. Didn't get one of these Korean slots. And what a rise. This would be revenge for the WCG quarterfinal. If he takes one more map. His maps are yet to come. Yeah, ironically, those are not the best Crypt Lord maps. Uh, we have Amazonia for him. He's going to play Lich first for sure on that map, right? I hope not. <laughs> DK Fiends should be by far the best on Amazonia, regardless of what you're facing. It's Mikael though, right? Mikael and Amazonia, that is, to me, almost guaranteed lit. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> if we get there. Or is it actually going to end in a 3-0? I would have never thought this possible, that this could be a 3-0 for Mikael, but here we are. Only one map away from such a possibility. Yeah. Shades of Neo Star League. Three and a, three years and a bit more ago. When Mikael was in a horrible slump. And it was a best of five. And he defeated 1-0 to zero with Possession Banshees. I will never, ever, ever forget this mirror match. And all of a sudden history repeats. Maybe. One to zero, you know he was looking marvelous recently against Nylof. He showed a lot of great performances against Orc, especially. He was looking insanely good. But against Undead, he hasn't been getting tested that much. Yeah. We saw a few games of him recently, Mikael included, but a lot of those were uh, WGL qualifiers. And qualifiers always, the level isn't quite the same. He played against Zhao Kai before, but that opponent perhaps not on his level quite. WFZ normally can always best, but here now. 1 to 0. Is it the Undead Mirror again that breaks his run? Yeah, he really doesn't have to put that much effort into his Mirror practice, that's for sure. But oh, maybe he should. Maybe he should. With the recent wins here. All right. It's time for game three. It is three. Match points in a row for Mikael. Spawning in the bottom right. 1 to 0. Reverse sweep necessary in the upper left hand side. All right, and I think we kind of saw this coming. 1 to 0. Not trusting in the Crypt Lord expansion Mira anymore. He's going back to standard Ted Fiend build DK Fiends. And Mikael. Playing fast fiends. And there are two variants for this. Either with a DK, the fast fiend build, or the so called Philbot fiends, which is fast fiends with a Crypt Lord, which is a strategy as old as time. 2004, calling. But of course, Mikael was around then as well. 1 to 0 was merely. What was he? He's 24 now, right? He was 8 years old. Probably seven when Mikael started playing. It is a clash of a generation, and at the moment, the veteran prevails. As so often. 1 to 0. Apparently, a little bit of a weak spot against the Korean legends. To Moon, obviously, oftentimes to Lin as well. And all of a sudden, against Mikael. Did he just cancel the DK, or was it a crypto right away? I'm not sure which altar we were on. I, th I think we were still on one two zeros. Okay. Yeah, it was a crew launch. Of course, with a fast fiends, late hero, but no critters on the map, so creeping is not that. Where's he going? Is, what? Is he just harassing right away? He can actually creep the big turtle just with the acolyte and two coils, if he wants. Crypto is still going to take a little while. 
And yeah, I think that's what he's gonna do. Or not. Heading what? over to the <laughs> graveyard. He's gonna be able to summon some skeletons here. Does this right away. Hyper-aggressive early game by 1-2-0. Wow, I wonder how well that fares. He stole one corpse, but it's beetles now. And I don't know if that is the right... ...style. Fiends will be able to deal with this. It definitely delays the tech, or should delay the tech. And takes corpses away, so probably slows down creeping as well. There must be a reason behind this. Probably a very, very good one. Yeah, Wanda Zero definitely wants to play very aggressively here. Not saying that he has to die for the Acolyte that has a low chance of working. But he's keeping Mikael from creeping, and that's what he has to do. Because if Mikael is left alone, he can creep insanely fast with these fiends and the beetles. That's the strength of the build that Mikael is choosing here. It comes at a price, obviously, and that is the tech speed. Tech will be much, much faster for 1-2-0. With the second hero coming in, he might be able to grab map control then. Wonder what that's going to be. He loved to play Naga in the past, but that is extremely dangerous yeah. against Impale Coil Nova. Super fragile, can't be coiled. So far, not willing to use a coil here to get the last hit, and with all that right clicks, DK is not even able to get the turtle. Gets his own fiend now, but only one against three. It's pretty clear where this fight would be going. And he is a little dependent on the last hits, right? Like, if he doesn't get any last hits here, Mikael is just rising to level four in no time. Yeah, he's gonna get level two here if he gets both the ogres. And that means impale. This opens up a lot more options. In fact, that is the level two. And the impale is... Locked and ready. Zero experience for one, two, zero. Also, no coils used at all. This is not looking too powerful. Again, not willing to go for this last hit. And once he gets caught against all the beetles, yep, exactly like this. It's another TP. Of course, no healing. He gets one of it. The fiend is killed. Okay, he gets something done now but on the cost of a TP. Yeah, but he must have also seen the mana pool of the Crypt Lord, and that one is gone. Nothing left. Ritual Dagger healing up now, but this will be the next creep camp for Mikael. He's gonna get very close to level three with this, if not even getting level three. And very important to go for the Watch Award. Can't stress this enough. Constant vision in the middle of the map is great. Ring of protection for him. DK can't misstep once. Gets the healing cancelled, thanks to the right clicks. Mikael seems very confident, and it's Sinaga again! Oh, wow, okay. Can be very good for especially the early mid-game stages. If Mikael gets to 4-3-2 levels with Lich and DK later, this Naga is gonna instantly die every fight. It Feels like 1 to 0 cannot allow the late game unless he somehow gets really far ahead, even ahead of strong uh, hero levels on the other side. Mikael is aware of this possibility. This is exactly what 1 to 0 played at WCG in both maps. He won. So there's a case to be made that this DK Naga in the hands of 1 to 0 can be powerful. Only yeah. one of these games was against the Crypt Lord, and that was on Amazonia, though. So really, really strange pick by Mikael in that very case. Yeah, even if she's not that amazing, perhaps, in the late game, for tempo right now, it's unbelievable. The Fiends can never go out far on the map. Mikael would lose them, definitely. As 1-0 knows, he's got a big tech lead. That means also he's going to have that Naga way before the DK, because, of course, the DK first has to be made. And Mikael doesn't have a choice in second hero. He has to go Death Knight. He needs the aura and the coil at some point. He can't afford a Lich, he can't afford a Naga second. He has to go for the DK, but now he does have the DK and that makes things a lot easier for the crew. Yeah, Mikael's build is a very slow one, but once it's there, it's a very powerful one. The acceleration is very low. But if he, if he gets to full speed, I don't want to be in his way. 
Good scouting by 120, buying time with that skeleton as much as he can. In the meantime, gets a camp. A little risky here by Mikhail to go for that big red camp. It does have a TP, I guess. But also Mikhail sending out scouts to yeah. see if he will be getting creep deck. Yeah. They're both doing a good job. High level on that mirror for sure. Red spot. Gave him the robe of the Magi. Can't complain. More mana. Later, more damage for the Lich. And more consumables for 120, who of course has no TP anymore. He grabbed up the Invo Potion. Scroll of the Beast. Will probably not have the biggest impact, but just destroy is also a little rare. Where's that fiend going? Double scroll, definitely a little unlucky. 120 needs some heal potions, he needs some mana potions for this Naga and this continued tempo play. He went for a strong tempo play on tier 2 to take some good experience and camps away. And he's also going to get his Lich and Orb faster, I believe. And with that, he's going to have plenty of damage. The Naga is going to be level 3. The Lich is coming, so we're going to have Fog Lightning and Nova. But the red cam for Mikhail. Big drop for him. Warsong Battle Bongos. 10% damage on everything. And if we continue this pattern, he might be able, if he's brave enough and willing to trade the TP, could be going for the second red spot as well. But yeah, this is crazy risky. Probably waiting for tier 3 for the Lich. 120 is, is making his way over there. We approach the 50 supply mark. And then probably time for upgrades. Maybe for the Banshee transition. These timings are incredibly important. 120 missing the scouts right now. He didn't go for new Red of Necromancy. He wanted to save money as much as he could for the Lich, the Orb, and everything else. And we're just creeping for now. Nobody wants to overextend just yet. Mikhail's movement at the moment, not perfect. Moves back from the left-hand side to the middle. But he could go to the back of the turtle, waiting for the ledge, who picks up a potion early on. That's something. Ah, sneaky creep, okay. Big heal potion, very good for the DK. I like that the ring was kept on the Naga. Very cool, I think that's the ring plus four. As she will very likely be getting focused. So we mask as a reward for that. Double gloves of haste for the Lich of Mikael. Mana potion brought. Big heal potion on the DK. Naga has an inbull as well, of course. The Point to attack. Can't be coiled. Needs consumables. And now we fight for the red spot. 1 to 0. Must know he perhaps might be getting creep jacked. In fact, Mikael no is right around the corner. No TP on him. What do you do? Go for the DK once again. Has an invo potion. Can be saved maybe. Seven seconds at the moment. Scroll of the beast used. Yes, at the moment, no destroyer for Mikael. Has to fight against the 25% damage boost. His bongo are, of course, helping against that fiend. Taken out, level 4 on the Crypt Lord, 4, Mika, a long range coil, Lich safe. Fog Lightning, Nova is ready here once Slip. again. Lich for 1 to 0 in trouble! Dead! They're both dead! Oh my god, the Lich is gone, the Orb of Corruption gone. The DK is once again, both DKs are in trouble here actually. One has a heal potion, the other has nothing anymore. No mana on the Crypt Lord anymore, right? Nope, can't use another Impale. Scrappy fight! And now 1-0 has slightly better heroes as mana has run out. He has the level 2 aura and he's got the Naga who's always go good with low mana. Whereas the Crypt Lord at the moment doesn't provide that much. Dust comes through. 1-0 with the expansion behind. Seems to be taking the lead now in this game. Okay, both are expanding. 1-0 was a little earlier. Another clash. Mikael is he banking on the fact that he can use the potion. Risky play, trying to get more shots in. Statue for 1-0, constantly healing. Same goes for Mikael. Mana is restored now. Of course, Lich is missing, but they are reuniting with their armies. And Mikael doesn't want to give 1 to 0 this Ogre Lord. Big drop. Could be a game deciding drop. Both Liches back with the army now. 
Low mana, of course. Impale to start this. What's he going for? For the Fiends. Coilrus ready. Stun not, la uh, not long enough on level 2. Reveal used. And that's a kill again. How long can they stay here? Both even resources. Almost even supply. Yeah, the funny thing is both think this is really good for them. <laughs> buying time up here because they have the expansion. Yeah. Perhaps not considering that the opponent does it as well. Oh, has it as well. Oh, experience goes to 1 to 0, but the item goes to Mikhail. And now there's mana again. And there's healing again. The DK is in trouble. <sighs> Who moves out just barely with a new invo potion, by the way? More mana, more impales. And that's the nuke on the Naga. And there's no save. Oh, wow, potion oh. passed. Now the Crippler is in trouble, has to go for the potion, of course. Big healing was ready all the time. One, two, zero is living on the knife's edge! But that's another kill. The Naga is gone. Second last coil. Is Mikkel that taking is... this? Three and oh. Yeah, we saw the problem of the Naga. You can't heal her up. Maybe Banshee's required to protect her. Is that tech coming? We don't know. One, two, zero has a slight supply lead, but seems to have to back away from this position. Lots of his units still hurt. Mana, sort of low. The one advantage that 1 to 0 has is the better aura with the level 2 unholy. But Michael is getting closer for that one as well. <sighs> Another invul stolen for 1 to 0. That was important. Two base, two base. Echo lead for 1 to 0. Who's not an upkeep. Okay, now jumping into upkeep and has a saturated mine. Dust settles a little. Helm of Valor was, by the way, the reward. We're getting close to a level 5 Crypt Lord Remo. That Impale level 3. Terrifyingly strong. If this continues this way, we eliminated the NEXT champion, the AWL champion, and the Dreamhack Fall champion. To zero didn't go for a temple. He's not making banshees. Destroyer. Oh my god, that was close. <laughs> Almost got whipped. Okay. Dust settles a little bit. Where do we go from here? It also feels like there's way more pressure at all times on 1 to 0 to have invuls. Of course, you want to have invuls as either player here, but if you're facing Impale, you absolutely have to have invuls. Triple rings, actually, I think pretty good for 1 to 0, helping to keep his hero safe. Double mana potion. Again, on Mikael, no mana potion on 1 to 0. Four rings, okay. He's doing the WFZ cosplay. <laughs> oh, they, seriously. Absolutely crazy. Another destroyer morphed, a little bit more experience for Mikael, creeping with the Crypt Lord solo. And all Mikael fans love that animation over there. Level 3 Impale. Lich is level 3 for 1 to 0, and he has Fork Lightning, so strong AoE as well. Mikael is getting ready for the ultra late game, I think. 1 to 0 should go for a fight here very soon. He's got Web coming in. And off we go into the big fight. Impale lands. Lots of damage. One Fiend taken out instantly. Nova, Fog Lightning on the other side. Heal scroll against it. A bomb going down. Diving deep with the Fiends. Trying to not allow a perfect Impale position. Statue's getting taken out. Both players losing plenty of supply. Indeed, this is a tournament life on the line for 1 to 0. Has to smash this fight. Destroyer about to fall, but Mikael feels like his fiends are just disappearing against the right click. Level 3 Naga, level 3 Lich. He's once again aiming for that DK, identifying that he has no TP, no potion. Will he just fall like that? The Naga is once again there to pass the invul. The ultimate sacrifice, maybe. Mikael saves her Lich with an invul potion and a call in the Naga drops for the second time. Big right click damage gone. Mikael, is he doing it now? Seems like it's looking good for him. That Naga, the liability in the late game, she fell quite easily there. That Crypt Lord Impale, so crazy strong, he has another one of those. Ooh, By the, the way, DK. ready. Using it there. Two more kills. 
The DK is dancing on a blade, and I think he's gonna slip soon. Push towards the expo. Naga's back from the tavern again. So much gold invested for the revive every single game so far. Can he break him? Tower gone in a second. Banshees helped tremendously, of course. 1 2 0 still trusting in the destroyers. The uselessers, as X Lord calls them. We go for the DK. Is there a nuke ready? There is! Safe! Still alive! Somehow still alive, but there's gonna be another impale ready here in no time. 1 2 0 struggling, running, fleeing, trying to stay alive! The great escape. No block. Level 3 lit for Mikael. 3. Statues on the ground, nuking the Naga again! Coil, no follow up. The Lich is there with a long range shot, and the Lich will fall for 1 to 0. Maybe though, there was one more coil, but without the Naga, there's almost no crowd control. He's losing more and more destroyers. Look at the face of 1 to 0. That's misery. I can hardly believe what we're seeing. Mikai with a tremendous performance, making this 3 0 happen. He takes out the Lich. GG is called. Oh, look at and this! Look at him! Look at the emotions over there. Let's go, champ. First time playoffs, first time top four. Semi-finals for Mikael. Would love to know who was there. Thunder, maybe. His brother. Oh my god. What a wonderful moment Goosebumps, for man. He has been waiting for a performance like this again for such a long time. Proving himself after so many years as one of the best in the world. 3-0, we were expecting the other way around. 1-2-0 was this massive favorite after a very strong group stage. Supposed to be by far the best undead in Asia. But Mikael today, so proving strong. to be the better one. It wasn't really a fluke. It wasn't just one game where he can't catch up. He wasn't really out micro. He had the better strategies on all games. He got the hero kills. He made the better decisions. It wasn't items. It wasn't unfortunate circumstances. W3 champions matter. And a lot of our fans just lost a lot of channel points. 80% <laughs> on Twitch and Instagram. We're voting on 1 to 0. That shows you how big this upset is. 1 to 0 getting caught by surprise today. He didn't seem to be perfectly ready. Making some definite mistakes with the Crypt Lord in the first two games. Trying to play with the Naga, the tier 2 tempo, but once arriving in the late game, she is just not up to the task. Incredible. The rise of Mikael, the revenge for the World Cyber Games. Where it was 1 2 0 advancing, the big dream crushed. But a couple of months later, or a couple of weeks rather, and it's Michael dominating. Chad is making a good point. He just lost to Shao Kai yesterday in an undead mirror. And now he's 3 0 oh, 1 to 0. And there I thought 1 to 0 had overcome his mirror weakness. Today he shows it again. But not that he played so badly, by no means. It was mostly Mikhail playing very well. But it seems like he is not 100% ready for this Cryptoid meta. Even Come after on. having played it himself quite a bit. Color me surprised. Yeah. Mikael. We see... What does, that, what does that mean for the rest here? Does that mean WFZ is going to beat Moon later? Maybe. For sure. Who the hell knows? And that overperformance, man. For sure. Oh, boy. See Todd in chat, who's of course in constant exchange with Mikael. Always giving a pep talk. Let's go, Chab. That's what they came up with. And that's the theme. He goes, he goes, and he goes, and he goes. So rare to see these emotions from an Asian Warcraft player. That relief. 
Six thousand yeah. dollars. But I think cannot yeah. not touch you when you see him working so hard, trying to make big changes, trying to turn his life around, once again trying to get back to former glory and be able to compete with the best again after putting in the work and hours for such a long time, finally getting the reward here. With that performance, Mikael could very well be the best performing undead at the World Championship. What year is this? Yeah. Do we step into a time machine somehow? Mikael could face Moon. The old Meteor Maker's teammates 13 years later. Also, the Rise Again teammates from WGTL. Here they are again. Absolutely. They know each other well, have for many, many years. Haven't met at this late stage of a tournament many times before. Of course, we used to seeing Moon in the semifinals, in the grand finals over the last couple of years in many different tournaments. Mikael was part of the scene, but never was able to get this far in a really long time. Amazing that he does it today. We are once again supported by Wong and Bangolia supporting us with the translation here from the studio in Shanghai. Congrats, thank you, thank you. Alright, you, you, you just defeated 1 to 0, 3 and 0. Did you expect that you're winning? Did you expect that it's going to be so one sided? I did not expect this result at all. But winning this quarterfinal sure feels great. Northern Isles first map you had the banshees earlier and it helped the crypt fiend survive thanks to the anti-magic shield and also curse you think that is the crucial moment, that is the crucial point why you won Northern Isles? I think uh, rather surrounding 1 to 0 script lord is what got me that game. So, do you prefer Crypt Lord first on all maps in Undead Mirror now? Recently, the DK first doesn't work that well. So I prefer the Crypt Lord first. Fan question. Yay! In the top eight, there are three undeads. So do you think... That the undead are, in comparison, stronger in this patch? I don't really feel that way. Let's go, Chen! Let's go, Chen! Let's go, Chen! <laughs> fighting, fighting, indeed. Um, I, I don't really feel that way. Uh, it's not too strong or too weak. It depends on the player. 
And that is, I think, a very good statement. It depends on the player. And today, Mikael was the better player compared to 1-2-0. Once again, gets eliminated in the round of eight. Bye-bye channel points, ladies and gentlemen. We will pull up a new vote as our next match is now really Infi versus Lawli. But before we go into the break, we got to read a couple of supporters here. The clean, uh, the feed stays clean. I will never get this right throughout the tournament. The feed stays clean. No alerts as this is the world championship. Uh, we don't want any alerts to interfere with that. So thank you guys for the subs. Steph, Maxilent, Swentilator, Tough Series, Mr. Miyagi. Let's go champ. Mikael, indeed. Rock Guns, Jazz 90, Vicious. 47 month already for you, my man. Rockin'. Oh, well, GG. And a big $35 donation by Maxilent. Not only subbing, also donating. You're the perfect example. The perfect role model for all of our viewers. Thank you, Neo and Remo. Keep up the amazing work. Thank you so much. You can support us via subscriptions here on Twitch. You can throw us a donation via Streamlabs with uh, PayPal or credit card. It's all possible. You can buy our merchandise over at Streamlabs as well. All the links in the stream description. And while you're looking for these links, you can hit that Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Discord button. Join us! Join our community. Stay up to date with what's happening in the Warcraft scene. We are here pretty much 30, uh, 365 days throughout the year. So you get a lot of competitive Warcraft 3 content out of this. And hit that follow button if you haven't yet. We're on the way to 100,000 followers. The big six digits. We want to break that. Now, an eight-minute break. Paul is coming up. So... Cast your votes. Infi vs. Lawlight coming up. 